Hi everyone, I'm Bernie. I'm with the Pember Museum and I'm here at the Pember Nature Preserve. And today we're going to talk about skulls. I have quite a few skulls to go over with you today. Uh, I will be including photos, close-up photos, you know, in between the live videos so that you get an idea of, um, you know, what animal they are. At the end, I do have three skulls, actually um, two full skulls and um, a piece of um, an animal skull um, as mystery skulls. So I won't be telling you what they are. You can search the internet and figure out um, you know, what you think they are. And you can always send, me, send us an email for confirmation. Okay, let me first say that when an animal dies, either by hunting, legalized hunting, or by natural causes, we as stewards of this earth have two choices. We can either bury the animal and, and forget about it, or we can honor that animal by using its fur or its bones or its skull to educate. And that's what I like to do. So some skulls I have here today, you are not, you cannot legally collect like the barred owl and the red-tailed hawk. The museum does have a federal and state license to exhibit with these. Um, so migratory birds, birds of prey, they are all protected. I do have another bird that isn't protected, so but I'm not going to spoil it and we will be showing you that. So, I have here two skulls on my desk right here. This one, and I, like I said, I will be showing you close-ups. So, does anybody have a guess what this is? Okay. As I was a former zookeeper, some of my skulls were collected by the animals that ended up passing. So, what you don't see here are an two canines, believe it or not, and they are ivory. So what animal would have ivory canines? But it is an herbivore, so it's a hoofed animal. Let me show you the bottom, the teeth. Oh, look at the cobwebs, ooh wee. So anyways, this is what we call a Rocky Mountain Elk. And as I said, I'll be doing close-up photos too. The other animal I have is here, and this one is on loan to me by uh, my former um, zoo employer, and they have allowed me to educate with this animal. It used to be a zoo animal. Can anybody guess what this skull is? Oh no, it's not a saber-toothed tiger, but it is a tiger. Yes, very awesome. And no, you cannot go and you cannot collect these guys um, because it was a zoo animal and I have permission from them to um, use, use them. But you just can't go out and, and kill a tiger and collect a skull. So maybe back in the 1800s you could, but not anymore. So, okay, so I'm going to get up and I'm going to show you all the amazing skulls that we have here today. To give you a quick preview of all the amazing skulls that I've brought in today to show you. Okay. First one I'm going to show you is the grizzly bear. Bears are omnivores. They not only eat meat, but also fruits and vegetables.
This is a black bear. And they have the same type of teeth. Getting into a meat-eating animal. This is a wolf. Let's see if I can't get that off. Bear with me. Of course. I should have unrubber banned them. Okay. See these teeth at the back of their mouths? Those are called carnassal. And they're for shearing meat. They act like scissors. So when they crunch down like that, they shear meat. This is a coyote skull. As you can see, they are much smaller than the wolf. And once again, they have those type of shearing teeth. They have canines for stabbing. And then incisors for stripping the skin. This little guy is a red fox, and this one is a gray fox. Let me put those together. So the red fox is a lot bigger than the gray fox. They have longer legs and different coloring, and you can tell by their skulls how different they are. And once again, they do eat meat, but these guys also will eat berries. We have an otter.
Bobcat. They have shorter snouts, but they also still have those shearing teeth. This is a Canada Lynx. To see the slight difference in their skulls. It's very slight. This is a domestic cat. And then we have a caracal. Then just some smaller animals that eat both meat and vegetation. We have the skunk. This is a mink. This is a female fisher. This is a male fisher.
This is one of my favorites. They have such very weird teeth. This is an opossum. Let me take that off so. Look at those. I think I can get into those teeth. So you have all these little sharp teeth, but they're also kind of flat in the middle. And their bottom jaw. Here I have two raccoons. This is a male, a mature male. This is a young female. Here we have a snowshoe hare. Let me show you the. There we go. Now, hares and rabbits are not rodents, they are lagomorphs. And the difference between them and rodents is see this second upper incisor rodents don't have that This is a cottontail.
This is a woodchuck. And you can see that they don't have that second incisor, so they are rodents. I'm sure you guys all know what that is. Check out the orange teeth. Oh yeah. That is a beaver. Look at the grooves. Awesome. We have a muskrat. It's a type of water rodent, just like the beaver. Here we have a gray squirrel. The bottom jaw has not been glued. Let me show you. We all know what a gray squirrel is, don't we? This is a small skull of a flying squirrel that was donated to us. Let's see. Here we have a bullfrog skull. I should say just the top. In our bird category, now, if you didn't see the tag, would you be able to tell the two apart? Okay, this bumps and then goes down, whereas this is straight down. This is a barred owl. And this is a red tail hawk.
this guy. What do you think he is? Well, you find them in Africa and they can't fly. That's right. This is an ostrich. Now, this, your birds have these bony eye rings. I was lucky to have, get, find this skull. So, the bony eye rings is in their socket. Like that. Cool, huh? This big guy. Oh. Okay. What do you think it is? That's right. It is a cow. Got teeth. They're cud chewers. This is an interesting skull. He actually has a bony core underneath his horns. That is a prong horn. This guy should have antlers, but when I worked at a zoo, we would have to saw off the antlers during rut season or mating season so that they would not harm the keepers or also harm the other deer that were in the one large pen. So this is a fallow deer. It didn't hurt them to cut it off. You just knock them out and saw it off with a wire and um, they still felt like they had their antlers. It's just much safer for the rest of us. Their teeth. Everybody knows what this is. That's right. It's a female white-tailed deer.
Mystery skull number one. What am I? Top view. So, there was an animal that got hit by a vehicle in front of my house. I pulled it out of the road and put it in my backwoods so that other animals could, could eat it. And I finally, that was so oh, maybe seven months ago, so I finally went and found the skull and it was pretty damaged, but this is what was left. So let's take a look at those teeth. This is the bottom part of the skull. So, those, what kind of teeth are those? And they're good for shearing what? So, what do you think this animal was? My next mystery skull is this guy. Now I'm going to tell you the truth. I did not know what this was when I found it at the zoo, in the zoo's boneyard. I had actually emailed professionals, Skulls International. Skulls, I think it's Skulls Unlimited International to find out what it was because these teeth right here had me really confused because it has a palate in the front like a hoof mammal but then it has these canines and two of them two on the top and one on the bottom let me show you the teeth Make sure I don't have, oops, I got the, the name under there so you can't see that. So this is a side view. There we go. So you tell me what you think this animal is. Forget that I labeled my skulls.